I walked out into the basement. It was dark out there, but a shaft of light from the bomb shelter poured into the shadows as I started aimlessly looking at cans and boxes. I let one earbud dangle at my side and listened through a single ear just in case Mrs. Goring arrived unexpectedly. Around the corner where the electrical panel was, it was too dark to see, so I turned on the basement light. There was a set of metal shelves next to the electrical panel I'd only glanced at before. A tarp caked with dirt was stuffed into the bottom shelf like a giant wadded up Kleenex. The second shelf was covered with old paint cans and mason jars filled with nails, screws, washers. The top shelf was harder to see, some old coffee cans filled with things I didn't care to look at, an oil pan, a lunch pail. The lunch pail caught my attention. It was the big green kind a carpenter takes to a work site, rectangular at the bottom and curved on top. I reached up and lifted it by the handle. It was surprisingly heavy, and I set it on the concrete floor with a weighty thunk. I picked it back up and looked at the bottom, where someone had used a thick black pen to write the word GORING in all caps. I popped the two rusty latches on the lunch pail and opened it up. Inside, wadded up in a tangled mess, was the one thing I'd wanted more than anything else. Headphones. I took them out, letting the glob of twirling cord flop out of the box. Holding the end of the headphone cord in my hand, I examined three strange plugs as wide as if they'd fit into a car cigarette lighter their sides a perfect match to the holes in the wall of monitors. I was fast on my feet, my shoes sliding as I rounded the corner. When I reached the bomb shelter, I untangled a long, thick coil that led from the headphones to the connectors. I placed the headphones over my ears. They were so old that the plastic on the wide ear coverings was cracked and brittle. Not the most comfortable pair of headphones I'd ever worn, but they were made for the bomb shelter monitors. The three connectors snapped into the holes in the wall with ease. I was plugged in. Now all I needed was a signal from one of the feeds, something to show me whether they actually worked. I looked at my watch, 11.04 p.m. If Marissa was trying to send me a message, I couldn't see it. I set the headphones on the cot and went into the basement where I turned off the light and put the green lunch pail back where I'd found it. When I came back, I put the headphones back on and sat down on the rickety cot, waiting. Ten minutes later, I fell asleep.